Honorable Governor of Kerala, Sri Justice Satya Sivam, Honorable Chief Minister, Sri Uman Chandi, Honorable Minister of Education, Sri Abdul Rab, Honorable Minister of Cin Cinema, Sri Radha Krishnan, my old friend Sri K M Mani, Sri Joseph Mani, Sri Otto Anthony, faculty and officials of the institute, students, ladies and gentlemen. Cinema is a complex and a powerful art form. It is a form of popular entertainment, but it is also a mass communication media. Films can transmit political and social messages. They can provide catharsis and perspective and can open our eyes to new ways of thinking, feeling and pursuing our lives. India is the largest producer of feature films in the world. People in India love their cinema. Whether they watch it in the movie halls or multiplexes or on television sets and even on their mobile phones, cinema has become an integral part of our cultural identity. While it is true that a large number of films are made for entertainment, the meaningful and artistic films continue to hold a special place with the audience. Visual media such as cinema, television and video is therefore attractive to youngsters today both as an avenue of creative expression and as a career choice. As an art form, cinema is perhaps the most dependent on technology and thus most susceptible to changes from technical innovations. The meaning of the medium of cinema undergoes a fundamental change whenever there is a new discovery in technology. Silent movies became talkies. Black and white became color. Celluloid films gave way to digital formats. Technology has transformed every department of cinema. Be it cinematography, audiography, editing or animation. Equipment quickly becomes obsolete. In this scenario, new aspirants need to learn not only the basics of the art and craft, but also how to adapt with and adopt the latest technology. There was the felt need to have institutes with international standards to equip our future generation of visual and video artists, not only with the aesthetic creativity and social awareness, but also with the technical and logistical aspects of film and video making. In this context, it is very apt that the government of Kerala has come forward to establish a national level film and visual art institute in memory of the former president of India, Sri K. R. Narayanan of revered memory. Sri Narayanan's life illustrates that hard work and talent bring success even in adversity. Born in an extremely poor and Dalit family, Sri Narayanan overcame several obstacles and occupied the highest office in the land. The only Dalit and the only Malayali so far to have held the office of the President of India, Sri Narayanan remained dedicated to the cause of social welfare. Before his stint in public life, Sri Narayanan served with distinction in the diplomatic corps of the country and retained his love for academic pursuits. The K.R. Narayanan National Institute of Visual Sciences and Arts 
set up as an autonomous body under the government of Kerala, has the vision to impart world-class knowledge and training in visual-based technologies such as cinema, television and video to Indian artists and technicians. It must be the endeavor of everyone associated with the institution to make the institute a center of excellence in visual-based academics and research, focused on innovation and creativity, and to nurture a new generation of filmmakers, technicians, artists, and researchers in the domain of visual science and art. I am informed, ladies and gentlemen, that initial steps have already been taken in this direction and that the Institute already has on offer three-year diploma programs in six disciplines ranging from direction and acting to cinematography and animation. I also hope that the Institute will develop a focus on research activities into the visual art domain and become a center of innovation. The Institute could not have asked for a better location. The people of Kerala appreciate good cinema. Hundreds of film appreciation societies function even at the village level here. The annual International Film Festival of Kerala has established itself in the international cinema calendar. The provenance of Kerala should prove to be fertile ground for recruiting talented students and staff. I am indeed happy to formally inaugurate the Institute. I wish the faculty members, the staff and the students and the administrators associated with this Institute the very best for the future. Jai Hind.